Hello, this is um, Mr. Robinson speaking. I am one of the maths teachers here at OBA and we have decided just to do a quick lesson here, just as a bit of a hello and a bit of a welcome to you guys who are going to be joining us in September. Now, one of the main reasons we were doing this, obviously because of the unusual situation that we've had this year, you've not had a chance to actually come in and see what school is like um, at secondary school time. Now, I understand as well that for some of you, um, it's a really big step going into secondary school and you've probably got lots of questions and you're trying to sort of picture what it's going to be like when you come here. Um, and obviously, because you've had all this time off as well, um, even from primary school, it's going to be, you know, quite a, quite a significant thing in September when you start. And we just thought it'd be nice for you to have a quick sort of see a video quick and just get a little bit of a sense as to what we do here when we come back. So I know the maths team, all of us, we cannot wait um, to get started. And we look forward to seeing you um, whenever it is that you that you do actually, that we all sort of come back together. Um, so if we look over this, I'm just going to give us a quick sort of overview of something that we're going to sort of learn in maths. Now I totally get that some of you um, might have mixed feelings about maths and we understand that sort of here at OBA. Um, we know some of you, you might really love maths and you've enjoyed it all the way through primary school and it's one of your favorite subjects and you are really comfortable with it and you're excited um, to come into secondary school and do um, new maths, sort of new maths topics that are sort of new to you. You'll really like it and you'll really enjoy it and that's fantastic, that's brilliant. However, I do we do also understand that some people might be a little bit unsure with maths and a little bit underconfident and that's absolutely fine too. Um, we don't want to intimidate people. We're not expecting you all to come in and all be super maths experts and to have to know everything and we'll give you new scary things that you have to learn and that you'll have to learn them and you'll have to be good at them you have to be amazing at them otherwise we'll get angry it's not like that okay it really isn't like that um we are really 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 keen that people enjoy maths really really keen Okay, our head of maths here is Mrs. Thornton, and she's really keen for you guys when you come to actually have a nice feeling in the subject. She wants it so that anybody that comes into maths, anybody coming into a lesson, they're going to enjoy it, and they're, they're going to um, they're going to sort of want to come in. They're going to sort of want to learn, and they're going to want to sort of get better at maths and sort of enjoy the subject and actually have fun learning it. Okay. Now, one of the ways we're going to approach that is a big thing we're going to sort of look into is having a deeper understanding of things. There'll be some things you probably learn, particularly in year seven, that you might have come across before. So, you, for example, when we're looking at shapes, um, we might be looking at things like perimeter, which we're going to go over quickly today, um, sort of in this live lesson. Now, I'm sure that's something you've probably done at primary school. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of look into it in a bit more depth. I'd say that's the thing that you're going to sort of see in, in secondary school is we're going to make sure that we have a deeper understanding of things, because if we have a deeper understanding of things, we're more confident. And once we're more confident, by the time, you know, years from now, when you're in year 10, year 11 and studying for your GCSEs, you will feel more confident at doing sort of some of the stuff that you've seen then. Now, some of you, as I say, you might have had sort of cousins or brothers and sisters and things that are in secondary school. And you might have seen some of the work they do and think, whoa, that's really intense. And you find it really difficult. But part of the really important um, sort of thing that we're going to be doing when you guys come here is is we're going to make you feel really comfortable with the subject so that by the time you get to that stage, all of that obviously will be challenging at times. Maths can be a challenging subject, but you will have the confidence and the ability to take on some of those, some of those sort of difficult things that you sort of that you sort of get by the time that you're at that age. Okay, so here's what we're going to look at today. Um, you might have spotted, I know it's not completely clear, so I apologize it's not completely clear, but I thought go old school today and we'll just use a whiteboard um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give some examples to explain things to you and then while you're watching at home you are feel free that you can just sort of follow on you can have a go yourself I would recommend 
that you have a sort of pen and paper just if you want to take some notes okay there's obviously no um no issue with this if you just want to watch as well that's absolutely fine um you know we're not just trying but i'd say you'll get more out of this if you actually do take some notes um because you'll get this is just a bit of a taste as to what maths can be like at secondary school um okay so i'm just going to actually wait a moment just while i draw something on the book to give you a chance to get some pen uh, a pen and paper um just to take some notes on okay don't worry about rulers or anything else it's just just take some notes um, we're not going to be doing any super neat drawings today i'm just going to be sketching which is just where you draw something fairly neat but it's not super accurate okay so that's absolutely fine so i'll give you a couple of minutes there and just while i do that i'm just going to start to draw the first thing i'm going to show you on the board Okay, now, just while some of you are getting your pens and papers and things, um, just another thing I wanted to mention here. Obviously, because people will be sort of seeing this at home and they'll be having to download it, I haven't gone for a really high quality video file because otherwise it would be huge and it would be difficult for people to download. So again, sort of sorry about that. But obviously, because of the situation, we're slightly limited here. Um, so hopefully if you watch it full screen, you should be able to see what's on the board. But if you're having issues with that, don't worry, because I'll be explaining, as I say, it as well. So if you're not quite sure, I'll sort of be talking at the same time. OK, um, so what we've got here is we've got a triangle and each side is seven centimetres. Now, some of you might know from primary school that to find the perimeter of something. And this is a point where if you were in the class, I'd be asking you this question and be saying, what does perimeter mean? But obviously I can't ask you. So I'm gonna have to tell you as well, but I'm sure a lot of you at home, you know exactly what I mean when I'm saying this. So the perimeter is basically the length of the outside of the triangle, okay? So all the length of the outside, that's what the perimeter is. The perimeter of a shape is around the edge of the shape, how long that is. OK, so here, my triangle, it's got to be all three of these seven centimetre lengths added up. OK, so it's seven plus seven plus seven. We could also think of that as three times seven, couldn't we? And therefore, we know that the perimeter must be 21 centimetres. OK, now, some of you might have spotted this because if you look at the top, you can see I've written this scary word here. I've written algebra. And you're probably thinking, hang on, this isn't algebra. These are, these are things to do with shapes. This is kind of, this is geometry, really. Now, actually, I did this sort of deliberately because this is another thing that you're going to learn sort of when you come into secondary school. What can sometimes happen is you'll find that some topics can be combined because maths isn't separated as simply as that. A lot of the time, there are different skills, like number skills, algebra skills, skills with geometry, all those different skills can be combined and mixed. And you might find that happening more. Now, it just so happens that I think algebra, some of you may have learned a bit of this in primary school, okay? Some of you may not have come across it so much. And some of you, I say, might be really, I know a lot of people, as soon as they see the word algebra, they start panicking, they start thinking, oh, I don't hate algebra, I don't get it, I don't understand it, it's all letters, and I don't get why is it letters instead of numbers. And that can be quite an intimidating thing. So I kind of picked that deliberately because I thought if you're worried about maths in secondary school, something like algebra might be the sort of thing that scares you. So I'm hoping today I'm going to use some of our skills from shape to actually apply to algebra. OK, and that's what's going to make it easier. So what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to start to learn for us to get a bit more comfortable with letters, which is what we use in algebra, as you might know. We use letters and symbols. We do actually use numbers as well in algebra as well, but I'll get to that in a moment, and you'll see what I mean when I say that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got a triangle again. Now, you might have seen before, when there were seven centimetres each side, some of you might have spotted that actually that makes it an equilateral triangle. 
okay now obviously it's not perfect because i've just sketched it on the board as i said we're not going to go over the top we're not going to use rulers and things for now we're just going to sort of take some quick notes so it's not accurate but it is we're going to say it's an it's an equilateral triangle so what i'm going to say now is i'm going to say that each side is the letter a so this is where the algebra comes in okay so now if i was to say what's the perimeter of this shape this is where it's a bit tricky because we think well i don't know what the number is now it's just a letter so how do we write the perimeter of that shape as a letter okay well what we do know is that each side is the letter a so if you look at it you can see straight away there's three lots of a so we don't know what that length is as a number but what we can do is we can say well it must be a plus a plus a okay that is a way we could say what the perimeter of that shape is now the thing that confuses people with algebra is sometimes we don't know what that letter means sometimes we don't know what that letter means but that's fine we can write it like that and we at least know that's how we've said as best as we know well it's three lots of whatever a is okay so a plus a plus a okay there is another way of writing it okay remember how i did the same before when we were doing three times seven we could say it's three times a couldn't we okay and this is where we get something that we can sort of learn from from this okay instead of saying three times a what we tend to do is we just write 3a okay that is how you would describe the perimeter of that shape it's three lots of a we just write 3a that simple we basically ignore the times in the middle we don't have to write that okay now what i want you to do is have a go underneath with a square that i'm going to draw and instead this time i'm going to use a different letter I'm going to use the letter E, okay? It doesn't matter what letter it is. And what I'd like you to do at home, if you can, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to have a go of it. I'd like you to write the perimeter of this square using the same method that we've done above. Now, I'm going to stop here as well, and Paul, just to let you know. I know this is a new topic, and this is just something to sort of give you an idea as to sort of some of the things we learn. But if because it's new to some of you. If you're a bit unsure, algebra takes a bit of getting used to. So if you're unsure about it, do not worry, okay? If you don't know how to answer this yet, that's absolutely fine, because I'm gonna go over the answer so that we can build up a bit of practice. Don't feel like you have to get something straight away. And that's something I'll tell you, all the teachers here will tell you in maths, when you're coming into school, we're not expecting you all to be amazing at the new things you learn. That was the point I was trying to make with this okay so have a go of it if you get it wrong it does not matter that's absolutely fine because i'm going to go over it again and we need to sort of build up sort of to this so that we get more confident with it so i'm going to give you a couple of minutes now i'm just going to be quiet for a second you can have a go of it okay and hopefully you can see it. if you can't see it clearly because of your screen or if it's sort of low picture quality we've got e e e and e for the square so write that as a perimeter and there's a little clue as to how to do it as well Okay, hopefully that's enough of a chance for someone to, for some people to have a go. I don't want to leave too many pauses in this video. So um, let's sort of have a go and have a look over what this is. So how would I approach this? I know I've got four lots of E. So I'm going to write, first of all, E plus E plus E plus E. So there's four lots of E. That's four times E. So I can write it just as four E. 
if you've got that fantastic really really well done really excellent okay as i say though before if you're not sure about it that's fine we're going to keep practicing it and bear in mind this is only just one lesson that we're just having to go off to get a bit of a taste for this when you actually come around to doing algebra um sort of next year obviously you'll have more time to actually practice this properly in lesson okay so don't worry about it it's just a bit of a it's just a bit of an idea as to some of the things that we learn okay so i'm going to rub these out now and we're going to try another one um, to have a go off. So this time, I'm going to do one more, and we're going to see sort of how we approach it. So this time, I'm going to do, some of you might recognise, is a hexagon. I'm going to try my best to draw it freehand on the board. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad. Okay, so there's my hexagon. And again, I'm going to label each side. This time, I'm going to use the letter F. Okay, it doesn't matter what the letters are. Okay, but this time I'm going to use the letter F. Okay, now, same as before, we know that each side is the letter F. Okay, can you tell me what the perimeter of that shape is? Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to have a go with that. Okay, so go a little bit quicker now. And you can have 30 seconds to have a go. Okay, and if you remember, same as before, if you're unsure, that's absolutely fine. Okay, I think that's generous 30 seconds. So we've got six sides, so it must be F plus F plus F plus F plus F plus F. Okay, so it's six lots of F, so the answer is six F. Now, some of you probably, if you're getting more confident, some of you might have noticed by now that actually we could just, you might have just seen that and said, well, it's six F. Okay, and if you're starting to see that, that's really, really good. That's a really good sign. Okay, because it means you're starting to think a little bit more algebraically. And if you think about it, look how easy that is to sort of grasp. The six sides, each side is F, so we just write 6F. Now, I think this is where I'm going to highlight one of the confusing things about algebra. If you think about it, most of what you guys have learned in primary school, and still even in secondary school, you learn a lot. When you think of maths, what's the first word that comes into your head? Because for me, even for me as a maths teacher, I think numbers. Okay, it's not letters, it's numbers, isn't it? We think about numbers predominantly with maths. That's what we relate maths to, you'll think numbers. Okay, so what's confusing about algebra is you think, well, why is it a letter? Why isn't it just a length, just a number? The point is, sometimes we don't know what the length is as a number. And in questions, with algebraic questions, you get them written as letters. So we don't know what the actual length is. We don't know what that number is. That's why it's represented as a letter. So the way of writing it, 6F, that's the best we can do. Unless we know what that length is, okay, which we're not going to go into today because we can, that's something that you learn in algebra, but I don't want to be sort of overloading you with too much just in one quick taste of lesson. So for now the best we can do is just write it as 6f that's the best way that we can do it that's the only way that we can do it we can just say it like that okay so that's what we call it we say 6f okay right so i'm going to give from there i'm going to do one that's slightly more challenging and again i'm going to have a go of one and then you can have a go of one afterwards okay so you're not going to get sort of lots and lots of questions. We're just gonna go, me having a go and then you having a go, okay? So, with this one, I'm gonna have what some of you might recognize as a right angle triangle, okay? And you see we've got a right angle at the bottom. You may, you probably should come across those in primary school, I imagine, okay? Again, we're gonna use letters, okay? 
So I'm going to use A again. Doesn't matter which letter, like I said, it's whatever whatever sort of appears. So this time we're going to use A. So we've got A on the bottom, A on the side. Now I'm going to be a little bit more confusing now. This time I'm going to put a number in here. Okay. So that length, we call this the hypotenuse because it's the longest length, but don't worry, you don't have to remember that for now. Okay. That's seven centimeters. So now we've got letters and numbers okay i just want you to have a think for a second how would you write the perimeter of that now in a way that might be really uh, that's one of those things where actually that could be really confusing because now it's like hang on we've got numbers i've got letters so how do we deal with that but actually again it's quite simple how we write it there's a and there's a so i do a Ooh. My pen's going a bit sort of faded, just make sure it's nice and clear. A plus A plus seven centimeters. We just write that because we know that's seven centimeters. We don't know these sides. We just know that they're A. So there's two of them. And that's how we can write it. So A plus A plus seven centimeters. Now, because there's two of them, remember like before, we can write it as two times A. Or we can just write two A. So we write 2a plus seven centimeters, okay? That's the best way we can write that, okay? Now, as I said before, because we don't know what a is, we can't just give a number answer. We can't just say, oh, it's, it's I don't know, it's 20 centimeters. We can't do that because we don't know, okay? So that's the best way we can write it. We write it as 2a plus seven centimeters, okay? That's got a name, actually, and I'm not going to give you too many new words to use, but I'll give you this one to have a go on. This is called an expression. OK, the reason it's called an expression is because we don't actually know what the answer is because we don't know what A is. So that's the best way we can write it. We just write it as 2A plus seven centimetres. OK, that's how we write it. So we know that's a bit confusing, but actually when you look at it like this and when you look at it in relation to the shape, that's the best way of writing it, isn't it? Two lots of A plus seven centimetres, that easy. OK, so I'm going to let you have a go of one. So I'm going to draw a similar one underneath. OK, remember, I'm just sketching these so they're not to scale. OK, so this time we're going to have this length is nine centimetres. And on this side, we're going to have the letter X, OK? X comes up quite a lot in maths. As I say, it doesn't matter what letters we use, but what we tend to find is you, you'll find things like X and Y, because you think of X and Y on a graph, which, you, again, you might have come across in primary school a little bit. The axes on a graph, we tend to use X and Y quite a lot. OK, so I would like you to find the perimeter of this shape. OK, so I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to have a go. And you can just wait and see, see what we get. And the one thing I find frustrating about this, guys, I'm sure so many of you, when you're watching this at home, you're having a go at this. And I would love to see your work and I would love to be able to help you and give you some support, because I know some of you, are trying really hard but you can only i can only guess what you're doing which is frustrating but honestly guys when you um sort of join us hopefully in september and um, if that's when we come back um it'll be excellent because we'll be able to see and give you low support all the math staff here are really supportive in sort of giving our new students sort of lots of help and feeling comfortable and enjoying maths Okay, so here's our, um, let's have a go of this as an answer then. So again, just like I said before, okay, I know different people have different feelings about math. So I know some of you might be less confident than others and that's fine, okay? So just watch as we go, okay? So if you've been a bit unsure, I'm gonna go through this one again as well. So we've got plenty of time to sort of learn to understand it. So this time we've got X on the bottom, 
and we've gone x at the side. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write x plus x. Okay, that's our bottom and our side. Okay, should have put a little right angle thing there as well. Um, so x is there, and then we know that other bit's nine centimeters. So we can do x plus x plus nine centimeters. Okay, I can simplify that a little bit because there's two of them. I just write two x. If it's two lots of x, like two times x, isn't it? So we just write two x, two x plus nine. That's as best as we can answer it. Okay, so this, just like above, is an expression. Okay, this one is 2x plus 9. That's its perimeter. Okay, and that's how we write it. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. The last task, because I don't want to sort of overload you with this, okay, and I don't want it to be a really, really long lesson, okay, because it's just a bit of a taster. Um, I'm going to give you some uh well like a little almost like a little quiz to have a go of and again obviously it's totally fine if you get it wrong just make sure that when we're going through the answers you're looking carefully to sort of have a think about if you did get one of them wrong you can think how to answer it okay so what i'm going to write in a moment is i'm going to give you four different shapes and you're going to have the opportunity to answer them i'm going to put four answers along here and four shapes along here, and I want you to join up sort of each shape to each answer, okay? Now, what I'm going to do as well, what's quite good about, because I'm having to draw it on the board, this will give you a chance to sketch on your piece of paper. So on your piece of paper that you've got, if you want to sketch them as I am drawing them on the board, we should be up to the same speed, okay? So the first shape I'm going to draw, again, just like earlier, is an equilateral triangle, okay? And I'm going to talk as I go, because I know, as I say, some of you might not be so clear to see the board. So, again, I'm going to use the letter X for this. So, all three sides of the triangle are X on there, okay? Next one, I'm going to do a right-angle triangle like we did before, okay? And it's going to be... The longest length, the hypotenuse, is 10 centimetres. And the other sides are Y, okay? So that's the letter Y there, okay? Next one, I'm going to do a square. And I'm going to do the letter A for each side. Okay, and the last one, I'm going to make the last one a little bit more difficult. OK, a little bit more difficult, so it's fine. But this is just so if you start to feel more confident with the others, the last one's going to be a little bit trickier. OK, then if you're not confident with this, don't worry, just concentrate on these three. OK, but the last one's going to be a bit trickier. OK, this time. I'm going to have. Another square. OK, and just to indicate that it's a square i'm just going to put a little dash on each side that just shows again this depending on what you've learned in primary school you might know that that just shows that all the sides are equal okay i'm going to say that one of the sides is seven centimeters and then the rest of the sides are um let's think of another letter we'll call it we'll call it uh, we'll do e again okay so we'll call it the letter e okay right now on the other side, okay, I want us to be able to match up what all of these mean, okay? So we've got um, 2y plus 10, okay? I've got 3x, I've got 4x, I've got 4a, I've got e plus 7, and I've got 3e plus 7, okay? Now, the reason I've given, if you noticed, there are more answers on here to pick from. Two of these answers don't join up with that, okay? Because some of you might have already realised, well, the letters all, you just match the letters up. What you've got to do is you've actually got to think which ones actually match to what there are a couple of answers on here which don't link to any of those on the other side 
okay? So I'm going to give you a few minutes just to have a go of these, okay? And there's something else that I'm going to talk about at the end, just about this last question that we've got here, okay? And you can sort of have a look over that. So give us about a minute, guys, and then after you've had a go, we'll start matching them up and talk through it as we go. Okay, so let's start to go through them. Now, if you're not finished, that's fine because we'll sort of track as we go, okay, and we'll complete it as we go. So, firstly, x, x, and x. It's obviously got to be 3x, so I'm going to join that one to here, like so, okay? Nice and simple, right? Next one, y and y and 10. Again, some of you might thought that's easy because we've just got that the top, that 2y plus 10. Okay, you can get an extra mark if you can tell me what one of those is, what we call one of those, because I did mention it before and see if you can remember. Okay, um, next one we've got a, 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 and a, it must be 4a. Okay, notice it can't be 4x because we've got to use the correct letter, haven't we? Okay, because the letter is a in the question, it's got to be a in the answer. Okay, so it's not going to be 4x. And the last one. We've got three lots of E plus seven, okay? So we've got E plus seven, and that could make sense because the seven's there, that's good. And um, we've got E, E, and E. So we could write E plus seven, um, but because there's three of them, it's got to be this one, hasn't it? It's got to be three lots of E plus seven. So we go straight across, okay? So those were the ones that we didn't need, okay, those two. Now, I said there was a little bit more to this last question. Okay, and I'm wondering if any of you can spot it. See, I did this deliberately. See how we've got a square? If all the sides are equal, there's something about this that tells us something. You know, I said before that we don't know what, with, in algebra sometimes, we don't always know what the letter means. But in this case, actually we do. Because if it's a square, if that side is seven centimetres, then all the other sides must be seven centimeters. So actually, E must represent, in this case, it can represent different things in different questions, but in this particular question, E must actually be seven centimeters. So actually all of these, I'm gonna write this underneath, E, we actually have an answer. We know E is seven centimeters. So actually, if I change all these to seven centimeters, then we know and we realize, well, it's four times seven, isn't it? So actually, yes, it's three E plus seven centimeters as it was before, but actually we could also write it as 28 centimeters because that is, we know our times tables, four times seven, okay? So, I'm going to leave it there because I think obviously this is something new for you to for you to have learnt. Um, so I don't want to be throwing too much um, sort of new content at you sort of straight away. But what I'm hoping we take from this is one, we we particularly in lesson, it's it's not quite as simple with me just essentially talking to myself to the camera. But when we're in lesson, I'll be have we'll be having a discussion about this. OK, and it will be the same in other classes as well. We have chance to have a discussion because when we discuss things, we understand them better. OK, it's not going to be like loads and loads of questions and then just do all these questions, loads one after the other, one after the other. There's going to be chance in lessons for you to have a little bit of a discussion. OK, um, about the work that we're doing. Sometimes you will have a chance. You'll be practicing on your own, um, as I'm sure you used to. But there are always opportunities, as I say, particularly when we're learning new things, 
that we actually discuss them and think about them. And we'll also encourage you, you know, if there's something you're not sure about, share it. If there's something that you don't quite understand, it might bit well be that other people in the class don't understand it. So we, we, we discuss it and we embrace things that we don't get. And that's the thing I want to take, I want you to take from this is that we have, we have a really welcoming atmosphere where all we want is for you to try your best to be really sort of resilient, give, you, give it a really good go. But that if you're not sure about things, it's fine. And you can ask and we can learn, we can learn from each other that way, okay? So I hope, if I'm really made up if you've, had, if you've had a go of that. I'm sure if you've been looking through, watching this video, you've had a little bit of a go. If you didn't fully understand it, absolutely fine, because you'll be able to go through it properly next year um, when you're all coming back. Um, but if you have grasped something from that, that's brilliant. I'm really glad that you have, because algebra, as I say, it's one of those tough subjects that people get quite, quite, um, quite sort of, sort of worried about so if that makes a little bit more sense about how to do it then i'm really glad um, and other than that thank you very much we look forward to meeting you um in the next academic year um as i say i think it's likely to be september but, it, but if it isn't um whenever it is that you guys are coming uh are coming we're, we can't wait to meet you um in the maths department so from the maths department and also from the whole school in general um, we wish you a very good uh, holiday for what you've got, the summer holiday that you've got left. Stay safe, obviously, um, and look after yourselves. And we look forward to seeing you next year. OK, thank you very much.